Good morning everybody, we are continuing with our discussion on how <coughs> hydrodynamics is affecting combustion stability and then we also looked at <coughs> uh, how vortex itself makes sound and causes some kind of aerodynamic uh, noise and we looked at it in the context of solid rocket motors and uh, I was also talking about the lock on between the uh, uh, vortex shedding frequency and the acoustic frequency and uh, <coughs> this is also similar to the case with uh, 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 flow structure interaction and uh, vortex acoustic interaction and vortex acoustic combustion interaction and uh, in this context I wish to give you a reference of a very famous paper by Professor Ho on titled contributions of, to the theory of aerodynamic sound with application to excess jet noise and the theory of fluid in general of fluid mechanics volume 71 issue 4 625 to 673 it is a very uh, big paper almost 50 pages uh, and it is a very uh, famous paper. Uh, you see that uh, uh, rockets and flutes they are all behaving in a similar way. So a little later we will speak about the flute, I have brought some flutes with me and we will speak about it. But talking about the lock on uh, and we will see if this these concepts are ap applicable in uh, dumb combustors as well. So when we look at uh, flow structure uh, lock on. We look at the dominant frequency that you see. Frequency versus uh, Reynolds number, and right below I have plot amplitude versus Reynolds number, and uh, the vortex shedding frequency we saw it scales by a, a characteristic straw hull number. So if you have a straw hull number which is F L over U, then F will be uh, equal to S T into U over L, or rather F is proportional to U, and therefore frequency will increase with Reynolds number in general because as you increase the velocity, you will increase the Reynolds number. You can plot velocity also here. So uh, uh, as you increase the Reynolds number, usually the frequency keeps going up of vortex shedding. But then what happens? So let's look at the case of a uh, structure. So if it, uh, it's uh, this is tied to a structure, uh, like for example, in a case of a, uh, a cylinder, cylinder sheds vortex, but if the cylinder is mounted on a spring or something, and then the spring mass system also oscillates. Or another example would be, um, I mean, the same kind of situation occurs in underwater cables where you have flow and then it sheds vortices, but the cable itself can move around or vibrate. Uh, so you come near. So let's say this is the. Uh, frequency of the uh, structure. So this is F V goes like this, F S comes like this. So when um, so as you increase the Reynolds number, your frequency comes like this, and then suddenly it locks to this structural frequency. And both the structure and the vortex structure will vibrate at the frequency, and the vortex will start also being shed at the same uh, frequency. Everything will work together, and then it will go up. And of course, there will be some hysteresis when you go this way and that way, uh, but otherwise, this is the pattern. And the amplitude would be when it will be like this, it will gently increase naturally as the velocity is increasing, you will get uh, more noise being coming out. But as you approach this lock on, there is a sudden rise in amplitude, and then there will be a decrease in the amplitude of the uh, vibration or the vortex strength or whatever. So, if you are looking at a pipe, usually you can excite several modes. So, if you are looking at that solid rocket motor or a flute or something, you can have maybe more than one harmonic, whereas in structure, it depends. It, it may be possible to go to another harmonic and so on. Uh, so, if you have <coughs> such a situation and let us draw this graph again. So this is a structural acoustic lock on I would say sorry vortex structure lock on okay or it is like flow structure lock on vortex is like flow. Now if you <coughs> look at uh, uh, we look at uh, uh, vortex acoustic lock on. So we will have 
domain and frequency and Reynolds number and same graph same scale Reynolds number versus amplitude and uh, uh, like I said the same scaling of Strahl number happens so f will keep increasing but then uh, as it increases let us plot also the these are the various duct modes if you have a uh, you can have a closed open duct or open open duct, duct with approximate formulas as uh, what are the formulas for closed open duct and open open duct for the natural frequency uh, c by 4l 3c by 4l 5c by 4l and if you have open open pipe uh, c by 2l c by 4l or whatever so we just symbolically i don't worry which which one it is but we will symbolically mark and they are constant and we mark those frequencies and when they and you increase the Reynolds number and the frequency keeps increasing and then it will switch to one acoustic mode and then it will switch to the next one and next one and maybe after that it cannot lock on so then it will just climb like this. So this is uh, uh, and, and then the amplitude would be uh, I mean the exact features uh, it depends on the experiment but and depends on uh, the actual amplitude depends on how the uh, damping is in the system and how that depends on the frequency so many other factors but uh, this is like a schematic of how the amplitude will vary so when you have this lock in situation some people call it lock in some call it lock on uh, <coughs> when that happens you have uh, the uh, vortex shooting frequency and the uh, tubes frequency duct, duct mode or tube mode uh, they will be exactly the same frequency you can measure them for example what we did uh, some years back maybe it was in 1997 or 98 so we measured the vortex frequency vortex shooting frequency behind a orifice which we were trying to simulate the inhibitor in a rocket motor so we put a hardware anemometer and then we were measuring and uh, uh, this value was exactly same as the acoustic pressure frequency which you measure in the acoustic field whereas if you didn't have this lock on you will have broadband spectra and there's no precise matching of frequencies and the vortex shooting frequency may be different from it will be quite different from the acoustic uh, uh, natural modes uh, but when they lock on and they are exactly precisely uh, same and you can see to several decimal places and this is a, like a non-linear interaction any questions about this yes, sir, yeah beyond some period uh, in, in some range uh, this this locks in and uh, beyond that it it it's it, it doesn't occur now precisely how many modes it will lock on how many it won't lock on etc uh, it's hard to tell there are some cases when in our experiments you have managed to lock on to the eighth mode and ninth mode and tenth mode but uh, the uh, the lower side is because you can't lock in below this because there may be no acoustic mode and above that the damping may be too much that uh, you get certain driving from the vortex which will try to drive the uh, acoustic mode but then uh, that may not be sufficient to uh, get the amplitudes to go up because the acoustic damping of those modes may be very high uh, but precisely how many modes can it lock and all that depends on the actual uh, case but in generalities this is what happens okay so we will uh, uh, I have brought some flutes with me and some bottles so we will look at this and just to get you an idea first we will look at the uh, flutes these are carnatic flutes mostly so got whole bunch of flutes so you can see it is uh, it has holes here and it is a straight passage and of course they there's nothing burning here but the characteristics is very similar to combustion in the sense it's uh, duct acoustics and uh, so you uh, you excite lock on to the cavity modes here and uh, it is uh, in general close to the what kind of mode is it? open open mode actually whereas they say that some other wind instruments like 
clarinet, I have never played a clarinet, so I do not know how it even looks like, seen it only from a distance. But uh, this one is more like a uh, open open end, although you could tend to think that this side is closed, but there is a hole here and uh, this here when you play you keep certain fingers certain way and so the last hole you close and then that determines the effective length. So this kind of makes the pressure uh, equal to the atmospheric pressure. So then the effective length becomes from here to here and uh, open open duct mode. There will be some slight difference but that is kind of what it is. So what you do while blowing is, uh, so what you are doing is I am grazing this and of course there are different flutes work differently. There are some other flutes which have a labium like you have a reed kind of thing. Um, I have. So you blow this way and then this is a PhD thesis on flute and uh, you have what uh, I mean and there is a sharp edge here, there is another sharp edge and this vortex comes hits on this uh, that kind of thing. So this is uh, another kind of flute with the reed. I think these are the ones if you go to the marina beach and you can buy flutes. I had one of them but my daughter has taken it and she is not giving me. Uh, so you blow this way and then there is uh, the flow goes this way and then it interacts with this edge okay that is the way it is sorry. Uh, yeah but the yes some jet comes out here but uh, I think the interaction is with this edge. So if this is not there uh, the sharp edge is not there then it would not make sound and uh, this is people have done clearing photographs and flow visualization and so on, so on for those things and you can see this is like how the vortex is coming and rolling up and, and, and so on and so forth. I do not want to project slides with this because that is copyright violation so I will just show you this book. Uh, and uh, so first thing you can notice is uh, let us look at the flutes and make out some of this. This is a short one and this is a big one and uh, um, I mean you can see if you go to a Carnatic music concert they use different flutes whereas in western music flute they use the same flute for different ones. So sometimes they use the short flute sometimes we use big ones. When do you use big one? When do you? Yeah, so lower pitches you can use the big one and because it will have a uh, inversely proportional to the length that is what it is and, and so this is a smaller length so it will be higher frequency and you can uh, we will we'll play sa in this and play sa in this and, and you can see whether it is actually different. Uh, so that is uh, try to remember that note. So this is uh, significantly uh, higher frequency I think this is on uh, says C sharp and this is G so uh, I mean uh, significant difference in frequencies there. And you can also notice that uh, uh, <coughs> so the uh, you, you move your fingers and, and that is how you get it. But then <coughs> had this lock on phenomena been not there you would have to precisely to get certain frequency you will have to precisely blow at some Reynolds number. That would be incredibly hard because you also use the blowing power to increase the volume or uh, decrease the volume. Uh, also, so <coughs> what you do is. Uh, uh, so you do not have to be so sharp and that way you can use the uh, a little bit of this uh, Reynolds number range I mean uh, to control the volume. So it is not like the flute player is critically calculating okay this frequency what is the critical Reynolds number no he gets within some range so, and then when he goes to a harmonic uh, he blows uh, the same note he blows harder I will attempt to demo this but if it does not work we will have to edit it out. So that is uh, I mean I went past this critical Reynolds number and then I reached this frequency which is the harmonic. But I am not like looking at a flow meter or a Reynolds number meter to figure out it is just if you play you will get the feel. And now um, is there anyone who know how to play a flute here? No, just try playing it let us see what happens. We will see flow acoustic I mean vortex acoustic lock on happens or not so just make ah just ah. so this is like a broad band spectra. So uh, the vortices by themselves they have some coherence but uh, play again 
Ah, okay, so he's getting more coherent, but the first time it was more like a oof. So, uh, uh, and Viksha, you can try. Just uh, get an idea. You have seen flutes in uh, concerts, but uh, let's get some practice how you just uh, don't destroy them. <laughs> one more. This is actually a North Indian type one because it has six holes. Uh, the South Indian ones have eight holes. We can everybody can practice and we can record how they uh, just blow. I mean, please. Ah, yeah, that's. Ah, ah now you are left. Ah, that's good. So you, you, somebody who does not know, can you play? Ah, right. That is very good sound in which we are in in this range. We are outside the lock on range. Okay, that's enough. Okay. So, uh, so if you. Okay, so Ganesh is locking on, but if you are having this, that kind of sound, then I mean we are, you can clearly see that uh, we are having like a broadband sound as opposed to very tonal sound and uh, um, we are not locking in and we uh, really need to um, get a sharp frequency and our um, natural frequency duct, they are very sharp, uh, very narrow bandwidth and, and very sharp resonant, uh, resonant peaks. And that's what it is. And uh, there's one more good thing about the flute is it can sustain several harmonics, so which is why flute uh, sounds very pleasant. So now in flute, lock-in is very good. You can get a pleasant sound as opposed to this, which you have been uh, at least many of you have been successfully generating. But in thermo, uh, in a rocket or something, if you have this coherence and nice tone. That means the amplitude will be very loud. In fact, when you made this lousy sound, amplitude is also low. But with the nice sound, the amplitude is also low because you are putting everything into one frequency. So you can imagine in a rocket, I mean, you have a very nice lock-in, and then your amplitude will be quite loud. And then, of course, this here, the pressure oscillations are, few, I mean, smaller than Pascal or, or of the order. There, it is like uh, several bars or, or one bar or something like that. And then you can imagine things coming loose and breaking up and so on. So, but the same idea can be used uh, to uh, get, uh, I mean, to analyze and so on. So, first thing I did when I started working on the rocket motor instability with the inhibitor is to uh, read this paper and some other papers and then get an idea. So, I think if you learn about wind instruments, I think you can get a very good idea about uh, this lock in phenomena. So, uh, what do we say? I hope you saw this clear lock-in phenomena. It also depends on the grazing angle, which is what you guys are struggling to get many times. And if you blow too too less or too hard, you would be outside the range. So here we are locking onto the uh, tube modes or the duct modes. Now let's look at the example where we are locked. See, if there is a vortex, and if there is something to lock onto, some other frequency, it will lock onto. Of course, in this case. When you tried, for example, the foo sound came because you are trying to lock on, then you do not get lock on. But if you do not want to lock on, it will lock on, that is the way it is. Uh, so, let me give another example. I have brought some bottles here, and here we will not have tube modes, but uh, some other modes. So, we can actually, you, you, Bala was speaking about the um, Helmholtz resonator. So, this is like a Helmholtz resonator. Well, I think he derived the formula. I will ask you in the exam how to derive the formula. But at the moment, you can believe that. Um, see, okay, let's compare. These are approximately similar frequencies, right? I mean, the, I mean similar lengths. So I will, uh, without any formula for Helmholtz resonator and all that, I will demonstrate. Um, I don't know if I have a smaller one. There was a really small one somewhere. No, another. Ah, yeah, that one. I don't know if that's its length is. Oh, it's almost same. So okay, so this a little bit difference is there, but it shouldn't be. Uh, but you'll see order of magnitude difference in frequency. So uh, let's listen to the flute. Okay, and and uh, let's listen to this. Okay, so I I kind of cheated. I should get this frequency. So that is then it will be. Yeah. If I get pa or something like that, then okay. Now let's look at this frequency. So this length is—I uh, mean, I was 
this I was closing till here, so it is approximately the same length. Hope it works. It's way low, way too low, right? So, it is definitely not a, a tube mode, it is not C by 4 L or C by 2 L, but it is the Helmholtz mode. So, here also the bigger size means smaller one. So, let me try this one. This is definitely smaller volume and so on. Definitely, this is having higher frequency than this. So, you can take all bottles and construct a musical instrument actually. This is even smaller. Okay. So, there I increase, I have to increase my Reynolds number to lock in, right? Because I, I was blowing at the here, I was blowing very softly and I was peacefully able to lock on, and here I really had to blow much harder. Okay. So, because this thing's frequency is higher, so I, I and the lid sizes are approximately same. So, I really have to increase my velocity to get to a range where I could lock in. So, it is uh, uh, let us see if this works, I may have to drink some more water to Now, if I drink more water, the frequency will come down. Yeah. So, anything is there to lock into, it will lock into. So, if there is a cavity, it will lock into the frequency of the cavity, if uh, that is what we are having here. And all I am doing is uh, um, just blowing like this. So, there is a, uh, uh, there is a vortex being shared and the acoustic velocity is if the vibrations are this way, so I am blowing it perpendicular to it, and that's when the maximum power power comes out. So there are people who have uh, taken movies of such things, uh, and this is a very similar situation to uh, side branches. Uh, this is a picture of the side branches, and you can see this. These are Schlieren pictures, and if you wonder how you can take Schlieren pictures in a cold flow, normally you think of Schlieren for supersonic flow and so on. So uh, they inject a little bit of CO2 somewhere there and then do Schlieren. So, the density change is like, it is like putting smoke, but more convenient and uh, uh, what, what else. Uh, so, is there any question on this, uh, on this. Uh, if you have a, a vortex shading and if you have a spring mass system or some kind of uh, spring in us in the system as in structurally, you can lock to that. Like if you have a uh, cylinder and then cylinders mounted on spring and mass. That's a system which is studied uh, very well. And the uh, the, the rigid cylinder patterns, vortex heating patterns and frequencies are different from when the cylinder is mounted on a spring and and so on. And so this is uh, interaction between two resonating systems. So flow structure interaction is one of them. Uh, flow acoustic interaction and now we look at flow acoustic combustion interaction. Before that, I will pause and see if you have any questions on this. I thought it was easy, simpler to show these things this way rather than um, write formulas and, and so on. I hope you got an intuitive understanding. So, now, the next question is what happens when there is a vortex acoustic uh, 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 coupling in a combustor. So, there is a combustion vortex acoustic uh, coupling. Uh, would, would you get this pattern or would you get some other pattern? So, it is a little uh, tricky question. In fact, people believed that it was the same thing that was happening. But it turns out that it need not be. There is another scenario which I will uh, present here. This is a recent discovery. So, this is my last number and uh, amplitude and Reynolds number. So, vortex shading also has several modes. So, let us draw two modes here. Okay. So, you can um, if I uh, with the same orifice you can have uh, um, several modes of vortex shading the first mode, second mode. So, and if you have a um, cavity this way I can have one vortex always or I can always have two vortex between them and, and so on. So, there are many modes there and so, you have this duct frequencies here, look for the color chalk. So, 
So, the So, you can actually have of course, in the, both the uh, duct modes and the uh, uh, when the lock on is not there you, you will see you can see if you make microphone measurement both the vortex shutting mode and the duct mode, but then when the lock in actually the duct I mean the acoustics locks to the vortex shutting it seems like, because uh, I, I mean uh, the actual details I am not clear, but this is a new uh, finding uh, the vortex is causing the periodic thing and the acoustics is probably changing the boundary condition and all that to lock on to this. So, this is reported by our IIT Madras people. Uh, so, instead of the vortex shedding frequency locking the acoustic here the sound lock to the vortex shedding frequency and I will tell you when it happens and when it would not happen. Uh, this is S R Chakravarti he is a very famous professor at IIT Madras. Uh, in thermoacoustics. Actually, uh, you can also see this kind of situation in combustors. The one pulse combustor that I have follows this. I think some of you have seen it, uh, the one in the RM lab. And there, actually, the fuel injection is right uh, behind the bluff body. So, it is non premix, but um, it, it gets premix very fast. It is like that uh, industrial premix combustor. So, since the holes are very close, you actually have equivalence ratio fluctuations. And the equivalence ratio fluctuations actually go like the acoustic field. So, then the uh, thing shifts to the acoustic field whereas, in these experiments actually uh, I think it, it the fuel is injected way, um, um, way up. So, by the time the, um, uh, the fuel air mixture reaches the um, flame the equivalence ratio fluctuations are kind of smeared out. So, it actually um, so the vortex shedding is the strong periodic thing and then sound is going to towards that and the precise way of how I mean the natural frequency is changing it must be because the it while the lock on happened the impedance has changed or something I do not know the details, but, uh, but you see this scenario and this scenario in different combustors. So, with uh, I just very briefly mentioned to you this paper you can like have it I can give you the PDF uh, I just mentioned this very briefly to show that still there is a lot to understand this is a very uh, recent finding 2007 actually and it is a very exciting subject and there is a lot to be learned uh, and there are 214 references to be read in that uh, which are given in that uh, review paper. So, uh, if uh, are there any questions. So, if there are no questions I will uh, mention briefly about passive control of these vibrations. Okay. So, vortex coherent and the related periodic heat release can be minimized by manipulating the chamber acoustics to reduce the shear layer forcing field. So, if the shear layer is responding to acoustics and is rolling up more coherently. So, if you can somehow dampen the acoustic field with some passive devices then this periodic roll up and all that it is coherence and, and the strength would come down. So, then the threat of instability will be will be lower. So, 
what people do is to either put orifices upstream in the duct or put dampers or, or Helmholtz resonators or quarter wave tubes uh, when uh, you have a uh, at a location close to a pressure maxima you can put a, a, a Helmholtz resonator or something. So that it absorbs lot of the energy so that is one possibility and the other possibility which is difficult is okay you can try to make sure that the hydrodynamics and vortex have different frequencies. So the vortex shedding happens at one frequency which is far away from the hydrodynamic field. Now if, if you are at this boundary and you can keep the hydrodynamic frequency lower than acoustics but once you are here whatever you do okay you may shift one this way on other way but then if not the first mode second mode or the third mode will will uh, will get excited. So if they are quite far then I think that is the simplest thing to do. Uh, and the uh, the amplitudes can be adjusted by adjusting the inlet length and the outlet length so if you change the outer uh, if you change the combustor length you can change the frequency of the acoustic field so that's another way to manipulate the frequency of the acoustic field if you change the inlet diameter or the step diameter then you can actually change the frequency of the vortex shedding but the problem is when you have made all the combustors and then the designer would not let you change any of this then the only possibility is to put this damping uh, devices uh, now the Another possibility is to of course we can damp out we can also change the driving if we can somehow get uh, P prime and Q prime out of phase. So I was remembering an episode from Star Trek where I do not know the en enterprise is stuck somewhere and cannot get out of the gravity and then the solution was change the gravitational constant. So <laughs> uh, in Star Trek you can say whatever you want but in reality it is very difficult. Uh, so here um, so you, you can um, I think it is not as bad as it seems you can actually change the phase between the heat release and the pressure. So you can change the mixing time by uh, different injection strategies or you can change the location of the flame by changing the velocity with which the uh, things are convect gas gases are convected or you can change the fuel injection pattern and, and uh, uh, if it is a if you are having actually a spray then you can actually change the spray nozzle and change the spray uh, the, the size distribution of the droplets that are coming out. So there is some things uh, that is uh, under your control uh, of course many times you calculate something and you think you should go this way and when you go the other way things may work. So if you have some idea I would try the opposite thing as well uh, just to see which works that is really to be honest and then give explanation afterwards to get faster solution. If you talk about um, annular combustor with several burners as I mentioned as somebody I think somebody asked this question and then you can have uh, each of them having a different delay so that you do not have a coherent bang but you have distributed heat release so that the uh, heat release is uh, smeared out the heat release oscillation is smeared out. So uh, any, any questions on this there, there are lot of uh, ways of passive control but uh, I mean these are some of the strategies. Okay, I will let you write down these things in the meantime I will drink some water. So um, let us summarize what yeah you have it. Yeah, in that uh, picture dominant frequency was press uh, ring or somewhere what you have done yeah. there is no intermediate uh, state no. In the actual situation, that you mean whether it goes from here to here? Yeah, no. in this only lock on frequencies are there, yeah. but in actual case, there will be a lot of intermediate steps. Well, let us do a demo. Yeah. Uh, there is no intermediate, you just here or there. I'm, I think I should not risk my flute playing skills it is 20 years since I played I take it out every year for the acoustic class and then go back and deposit it safely but uh, let us try again. Oh, some other note. So there was you just get the note or it is harmonic I mean or whatever is the other duct mode there is no in between in between you can get if you do then everything is there the uh, 
non lock on situation then you get a broadband thing. So, there the spectra will be like uh, it will be still modulated by the natural modes, but if you look at the two spectra when you have a tone you have very sharp uh, frequencies, but if it is not a tone the spectra would look something like this. So, this is uh, power versus uh, frequency this is how it looks like whereas if you so if you make that sound this is what you get uh, and the uh, nice would take a uh, nice sound from the flute would be something like this and typically there are even 10 harmonics and so on but in between thing. So uh, that means that if, if you once lock on uh, any range so you have to change the uh, 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 mode so then if you have locked down here and you want to get an in between thing you have to change the length by moving your fingers. Yeah, but uh, in a combustor yeah. case uh, that means once you lock on a, any grain or somewhere increase will lead to another frequency lock on. Uh, so, you, you are locked down here yeah. or see in this situation the frequency will continuously change because you are locking to the vortex shedding mode. So, here if you increase the frequency it will uh, it will keep on increasing frequency then it will jump to another mode and then keep or, or the other way. But uh, whereas, in this kind of situation where let us say your injection holes are near the uh, step or something and then you are locked down here and you keep increasing the flow rate uh, or the Reynolds number and you would not change the frequency till some time and then it will abruptly jump to a higher mode. So, the, we cannot have a safe uh, situation in between at all. So, once it locks till it gets out yes. and it is a big range and then it will lock to the next one. Uh, here also I mean here the frequency is changing, but it is not safe it is large amplitude under this frequency actually. Okay. Same as that of fruit and the combustor is this long you will get this frequency. This okay let us okay the speed of sound will be different. So, let us look at a combustor which is 1 meter long. So, L equal to 1 meter and average speed of sound let us say is like um, 600 meter per second because it is a higher value. Of course, in reality you have to solve that problem which you solved earlier. You have to know the temperature, you have to solve the Eigen value of that Bessel some equation was there or numerically find it. Uh, so, C by 4 L let us say it will be like and if you have a dumb combustor and the inlet is small it will be like a, a closed end or close to a closed end 600 divided by 4 into 1 this will be how much 150 hertz did I do it correctly yeah. So, it is on the order of 100 hertz 200 hertz or even 50 60 hertz. Can like withstand some frequencies, like let us say 150 hertz frequency. If it can withstand, see, it can see frequency is not what you are withstanding, it is the amplitude whether you are withstanding. So, for example, here I am playing, I do not know, some frequency, uh, it is like 400 something hertz or something, perhaps, uh, uh, and uh, it nothing happened to it. And some other flute I made played 250 hertz or. 70 hertz nothing happened. So, if the amplitude is small any frequency is okay, but if the amplitude is large there is a problem. And the other issue is is there anything your combustor may not break up, but something else in the aircraft or something will have the uh, natural frequency at this frequency then there is a problem. Uh, but if that does not happen if that is ensured that those frequencies are different then it is a question of how large the amplitude is. or certain frequency there is a tendency to be driven and then you can change the combustor frequency I do not know if that is what you mean you meant. If the driving can occur in a certain frequency range you make sure that the combustor frequency frequency is out of the range is that what you say? Can you restate your question in some other way so that I understand. Some particular frequency 
more yeah. structural mode will vibrate in that zone too. Yeah, so that yes, I mean if you if there is no problem with structures you can have a frequency. I mean this is good example. No nothing if the flutes break up with this frequency with this frequency amplitude then there is a problem. So it does not break up. So but the problem is if you uh, I mean we want light weight and do not use material and, and all that uh, and uh, if to make it if you make it like big and fat then it will structurally withstand but then uh, you do not want to do that also that is the problem. So I think as an engineer will not accept that solution to make your engine robust by making it massive or something. Uh, I think he would ask the combustion engineer to uh, um, reduce the amplitude somehow. Frequency yes you will ask to change the frequency if something else so you let us say you have a low amplitude oscillation some missiles I have heard uh, uh, you have uh, well this is recorded so I cannot give the names but uh, so <coughs> you have uh, you, you have a miss, missile it is uh, working fine or, or a rocket it is working fine under static test there is no problem and it is fired also fine no problem it goes into service. But uh, if the missile is there in service every now and then they will take out a missile and fire just to check if it works or not it is like uh, shooting practice like if you are a soldier you have to do shoot so many rounds per week or some such guidelines similarly just to make sure that the weapon is working it will be tested right sir? and then you test it and then suddenly it blows up and then you panic and one day test another one again it blows up and then you go back to the test stand and make a test without flying and then everything is fine the oscillations are almost nothing then it turns out that the oscillations are very small but there was some component in the navigation system which is also which vibrates and spoils and electronics is very sensitive to sound right by sound and vibration. So under such then the easiest way is to uh, rather than kill the oscillation already they are very low uh, and you anything you change may actually make it bigger. So change the natural frequency of the navigation system so that it does not vibrate to this so under that circumstances or you change the combustor length slightly but in a existing combustor it works nobody will let you change anything actually the designers are saying uh, do magic but do not change anything or oh, add some magic powder into it and get it to stop or something that is pretty much what the rocket instability people say. But uh, so in this case it is easier to change something with the way the um, electronics is mounted and you can, so you change the frequency of that. Uh, does that is that what you are asking or okay so we are not really changing like changing the combustor frequency is not really getting rid of the oscillations but uh, there is a roundabout way when your oscillations are low but something else is locking in anything else okay so in summary in the last two or three classes we looked at instability associated with formation of large scale vortices in the mixing layer which coupled with the acoustic pressures to excite strong oscillations and uh, we looked at cold flow results and we saw that the uh, we are having Kelvin Helmholtz instability and uh, we uh, looked at some brief theory and we saw that the linear stability theory predicted a strong number of 0 0.017 at the initial layer uh, but then there is vortex merging and so on and then at the uh, there is a big vortex and uh, which is which is having a lower frequency and it has like a stroll number based on jet diameter and, uh, and and the velocity at the exit and that is like 0.25 to 0.5 that is the preferred mode and if you excite at that frequency then there is a good chance that the vortex will become very coherent and, and your oscillations will be excited at very large amplitude and uh, and, and then the, uh, the combustion gets periodic along with this uh, vortex shading and although the uh, in cold flow you do not see very large amplitude unless there is this kind of edge tone kind of business or, or a lock in kind of business. Um, but uh, when there is reaction happening that is a very strong monopole source so periodic heat release happens there is feedback and the mixing layer rolls up into vortices where combustion occurs. So if you have a dumb combustor and you just blow air you will not hear anything that is why in flute they have that uh, labium and that, uh, that uh, the vortex rolls up from there and hits on the edge and makes the, makes the sound and uh, the uh, energy release uh, so once the mixing layer rolls up into vortices and combustion occurs and you now then having start having the energy release being periodic in nature and this will reach a maximum when the vortex is breaking down into fine small scale turbulence and the combustion now suddenly happens and so there are uh, different 
mechanisms which lead to this transition and I told you it is a very advanced uh, topic, uh, vortex interaction is there, interaction of vortices with walls is there uh, and so Kevin Helmholtz instability may come but there is also this flapping mode instability. We also uh, looked at flame flame interaction and that causes the flame wrinkling and so on. So in any case a lot of different mechanisms all lead to fluctuating heat release which if it is in uh, phase with the heat release rate will lead to uh, which if it is in phase with the acoustic pressure will lead to large amplitude so that is acoustic driving. Now uh, this goes by the Rayleigh criteria so one way to control the oscillation passively will be to change the phase that means you change the time delay somehow or um, you change the uh, location of the uh, heat release zone that way you are changing the impedance you have a certain phase between velocity heat release and velocity but there is also a phase between velocity and pressure and what matters for driving or damping is the phase, be phase between heat release and pressure I hope you understand this. In many of these processes you have Q prime and U prime have a phase but what you want is to look at the phase between uh, Q prime and P prime and so you can change that by changing the phase between P prime and U prime that can be done by moving the flame to a different location where the impedance is different P prime U over U prime is different and that is another strategy to do passive control which is why the flame location is a very important bifurcation parameter. So you can change the geometry you can put dampers or you can uh, have a host of uh, uh, mechanisms to actually passively control change the length change the diameter uh, or keep this frequencies away. Uh, so I will stop here with this and in next class we will take a look at the uh, very briefly on what is the active control of combustion instability uh, on similar combustors and then we will um, after that we will speak a little bit about solid rocket motors and instability there and if time permits liquid rocket motors. Thank you.